children so welcome to the second part of the lesson birth in the previous part you had seen that the doctor he was waiting for the patient and uh, the patient was uh, to expect the baby and uh, it was time and the doctor was uh, attending the patient and then a lifeless child was born. So this doctor, he was very much troubled. Now what to do? So here we'll read a further. As he gazed at the still form, a shiver of horror passed over Andrew. So when the lifeless baby was born, he was very much afraid to see. He was very much afraid, horror he was feeling. After that, he had promised, his face heated with his own exertion, chilled suddenly. And then he realized that he had promised the family that everything will be all right. So, he was very much heated because of the exertion. But when the promise came to his mind, he revived and he felt quite chilled. He hesitated, torn between his desire to attempt to resuscitate the child and his obligation towards the mother. Now he was hesitating what to do. He was not at all, he did not uh, understand what he should do. He should save the child or he should save the mother. So whom he should nurse first. And... Uh, who was herself in a desperate state. The mother was also in a bad condition. The dilemma was so urgent that he had to solve it consciously. And the dilemma, whom to treat, I mean before, whom to treat later on. This dilemma was there in his mind. And then the, he gave the child to the nurse, then quickly, he handed over the child to the nurse and turned his attention towards Susan Morgan. Susan Morgan was the mother of the baby. And she was lying collapsed as if she was uh, dead. No pulse was there. So he went beside her. His haste was desperate. A frantic race against her ebbing strength and her strength was all going. It took him only an instant to smash a glass ampoule and inject the medicine. Then he broke the injection uh, and he took it in the syringe and he uh, gave her the injection medicine. Then he plunked down the hypodermic syringe, worked unsparingly to restore the placid woman. And then after injecting the medicine in her body, he threw it and he started trying to restore the woman. After a few minutes, a feverish effort, her heart strengthened, he saw that he might safely leave her. And after a little while, when he saw that the woman was getting back her strength, so now he decided that she is safe and now he should pay his attention towards the baby. So he turned from the mother and he pulled his shirt sleeves, his hair sticking to his damp brow and the face was fully covered with sweat. And where's the child? Then hesitated. Uh, hastily he asked, quickly he asked the nurse, where is the child? So that she, uh, she was very much afraid. She had put the child under the bed. In a flash, Andrew knelt down. So when she told him that uh, the child is under the bed, so he knelt down and he started looking for the child under the newspapers. A boy perfectly formed, the child, the baby boy was fully formed. The limp, warm body was white and soft as tallow, but the body was fully white and it was lifeless, no life was there. The cord hastily slashed, lay like a broken stem and the cord that uh, connects the baby to the mother, it was all lying over there. 
The skin was of a lovely texture, smooth and tender, and the small baby, its skin was smooth and the texture was very nice. The head lolled on the thin leg, neck, the limb seemed boneless, and when the body is lifeless, then the head moves from one side to the other, and it seemed as if the hands and legs also were boneless. Still kneeling over there, he looked at the child. Whiteness meant only one thing and that was unnatural. He raced back to a case he once had seen in the Samaritan to the treatment that had been used. Instantly, he was on his feet and when he looked at the child, then he found that the whiteness was because of the lack of oxygen in the body. And then he realized one story in that he had seen the Samaritan, how the baby was, re, uh, uh, means the baby was brought back to life. So he told the nurse, Got me, uh, get me hot water and cold water. So he asked to bring them, bring to him two basins of water, one hot water and the other cold water. But doctor, she flattered her eyes on the pallid body of the child. But the nurse said, he, she was questioning him, that when the child is lifeless, what he's going to do with that? But he did not say anything. He said, quickly, you bring hot water and cold water. Snatching a blanket, he laid the child upon it and began the special method of respiration. Then he pulled one of the blanket, put the baby on that, and he started giving the baby artificial respiration. The basin, when by the time the basin arrived, he was doing like that. And then, frantically, he splashed cold water into one basin. Into the other, he mixed water as hot as his hand could bear. And then, in one basin, he put cold water. And in the other, he put the water that is lukewarm. And then, like a juggler, once he put the child in cold water, then he put it in the hot water. This way he started giving bath to the baby. After 15 minutes, again he was sweating and all the sweat was going into his eyes and his sleeves were hung in water and everything, his uh, full body was damp and uh, wet with water and sweat and he was breathing very hard. But his attempt was useless. A desperate sense of defeat pressed over him and he was feeling very bad because he was uh, trying to make so much effort and the child was not coming back to life. And the midwife was also watching him, the nurse was also watching him. And uh, then they were looking at each other. The old woman was also there, she was looking what to do, how she is going to tell the daughter about the child and the floor was also in a mess. <coughs> Stumbling over a sopping towel, Andrew almost dropped the child, which was now wet and slippery in his hand like a strange white fish. And when the baby was wet, it slipped from his hand, but luckily it did not fail. For mercy's sake, doctor, whimper the midwife, it's still warm. And as the child was going to be dropped from the, uh, slipped from uh, the doctor's hand, the midwife shouted, that uh, doctor, it is a stillborn baby, so better be careful. Andrew did not pay any heed towards her and he was working on his process and he tried to rub the baby with the towel and tried to crush the chest of the baby and uh, giving artificial respiration to the body. And he was working it like a, a flash of light. And then as by miracle, the pygmy chest, which his hands enclosed, gave a sort and convuls convulsive heave, another and another. And then there was a miracle, the breathing started uh, one after the other, two or three convulsions came. Andrew was 
feeling giddy now because he was very much tired the whole day work and whole night he was awake the sense of life springing beneath his fingers after all that unveiling striving was so exquisite it almost made him faint and he was feeling so happy also that the child was now alive he redoubled his efforts feverishly and he was working very hard on the baby the child was gasping now deeper and deeper a bubble of mucus came from one tiny nostril a joyful iridescent bubble the limbs were no longer boneless the head no longer lay back spinelessly and blank skin was turning pink then exquisitely came the child's cry and then the child the life started coming slowly slowly in the body of the child the hands started becoming stiff and the color of the body started becoming pink and then after that a little while the child started crying dear father in heaven the nurse sobbed hysterically it's come it's come alive and the nurse she was looking everything and she was very much happy she thanked god that now everything is okay andrew handed her the child he felt weak and dazed and after working such a long time he felt weak he was feeling dizzy about his room he lay in a shadow litter blanket towel basin soiled instruments hypodermic syringe impal by its point in the linoleum the ear knocked out the kettle on inside puddle of water upon the huddled bed the mother still deeming her way quietly to the anesthetic and the whole room was in a mess everything was lying on the floor on the table everything was in a mess and the mother was trying to come out of the anesthetic the old woman still stood against the wall but her hands were together her lips moved without sound she was praying and the mother of mrs morgan she was standing near the wall both her hands were clasped together and she was praying mechanically andrew ran out his sleeve pulled on his jacket i'll fetch my bag later nurse and this uh, doctor quickly he pulled the jacket and while going he said i'll come back later on and i'll take my bag he went downstairs through the kitchen into the scullery his lips were dry as he scullery he took a long drink of water he reached for his hat and coat and then uh, through the passage he went there he took a long drink over there of water he took his hat and coat outside he found joe standing on the pavement with a tense expectant face and outside joe was standing all right joe he said thick, uh, thickly both all right then he said to joe everything is okay it was quite light near nearly 5 o'clock so from 3 o'clock he started 3:30 he started and 5 o'clock everything was over a few minor were already in the streets the first of the night shift moving out as andrew walked with them spent and slow his footfalls echoing with the others under the morning sky and when he came out in the street the people of the night shifts were moving towards the house and the second shift people were coming back and he also started walking with them and he kept thinking blindly obvious to all of the work he had done in blindly i have done something oh god i have done something real at last and the doctor he was very much happy that he had whatever he had done it was quite fruitful so i hope children you must have understood the lesson and this is the last lesson from this snapshot we have almost we have completed this and little bit notes of the lessons few lessons are still left and in the next class uh, we'll be doing the revision of the half yearly examination so good day and good luck children